Ascension Parish Zoning Commission. Let the record show that all commissioners are present. At this time, we'll go ahead and open up the public comment period. Anyone wishing to speak on any item on the agenda that's not up for public hearing, please come up at this time. Sign in with the Parish uh, the plan, uh, Zoning Secretary, and you'll have your uh, three minutes to speak. No one wishing to speak. Um, for acceptance of the minutes of the which we have revised minutes also, so it would be acceptance of the revised minutes of the September 13th, 2006 Zoning Commission meeting. I make a motion to accept the revised minutes. I have a motion by Second. Steve Barrow to accept, seconded by Julio Dumas. Is there any opposition or discussion? Motion passes. Item five, public hearing to consider rezoning. Uh, 5A zoning review ID 1605.06 tracks two and three of the Rosie PT Babin estate for MS Lano Acquisition Investment Group LLC. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jeff Loop. I'm with T. Baker Smith, an enge engineering, surveying, and environmental firm representing MS Land Acquisition. Uh, we're requesting rezoning of this piece of property. We've got a uh, preliminary site plan that I could put a play for you, but. Uh, to illustrate the owner's intent with the property. Um, it's a townhome development that we intend to do on this mixed use zoning. Uh, our position is that although the zoning map shows the surrounding area to be zoned rural, other than directly across the street, which is medium intensity, um, in actuality, there are a number of commercial sites up and down Bayou Narcisse Road. Uh, Roddy Road has a good section of townhome development, approximately a thousand feet or so. Um, there are numerous commercial sites within a mile, uh, many warehouse, storage place, construction yards. <coughs> Um, and the the point of saying all this is just to say that looking at the zoning map doesn't show you all that. And uh, just wanted to point that out. I've got some pictures to show the intended development. Uh, so kind of zoomed in there, <laughs> but uh, these are the fronts. <laughs> show that what we intend to do there is a high-end type development. This is not uh, nothing, nothing less. It's uh, three and two bedroom units that we intend to put there approximately. Uh, uh, thank you. 1,300 and 1,600 square feet for the three and two bedroom units. Additional. This is uh, another project that was constructed by the contractor that we're planning to use in Baton Rouge, Runny Mead Townhome. And, uh, and again, here's the, the site plan for those in the crowd that can't see it. Well. <coughs> Um, there is a little bit of land on the east that uh, we would be willing to plant as a landscape buffer. 
uh, also to the west if needed. Uh, let's see. In addition, the townhome units will not be uh, will not be rentals. They will be individually owned and so forth and so on. That's just a statement. I realize we are willing to put that on the final plat. That's as as much as we could make it uh, solid. You know, other than the restrictions, which don't get filed until the, the time of the file, filing of the final plan. Um, that's all I have to say. We're requesting your approval. Comments or questions from commissioners? comments or questions from the Commission at this time we'll go ahead and open up the public hearing anyone wishing to speak on this item please come up and sign in with the secretary you'll have your three minutes to speak Jason Morris Kyle, I live um, in this area at um, close to the intersection of Highway 431 and Bayou Northeast. This area is a known flood area that they want to build this in. We've asked for help um, in the past. In 2004, we signed a petition. We had about 130 residents sign a petition for a flood overlay. <clears throat> it wasn't granted through the council, but we did sign another petition, and what they did do was change the designation from medium intensity to um, rural. And that was to kind of stave off developments like this. Um, again, this area is a big time flood area. The, the, the spot where they want to build this, the sign that they have for this notice is about six foot below the road. So I mean, even if they built this, the road there is underwater when there's a um, major flood. So um, I respectfully request that you deny this. Thank you. Thank you. Chad Trostler. Yeah, um, my name is Chad and I live about three quarter miles from this area for 20 years and pretty much every <laughs> spring for the most of my life when we had the rain that come over the road in this area. Um, the pumping stations were built that alleviated some of that but as the parish has been built up it's back to coming over the road. Um, Mr. Rue ain't here. I watch a lot of y'all meetings, you know, he says the best thing we can do to help the drainage and ascension is to stay out of the floodplain. And by putting this to mixed use, you're opening a door to a lot of development all along the floodplain. So I'd like y'all to deny it. Thank you. Lane Stout. Good evening, thank you. Um, as Kyle spoke, w this is a very unique area. This whole area was rezoned to rural to eliminate developments like this from coming in because we could not get a flood overlay zone passed at the time. We see the parish working now on a drainage ordinance and they seem to be having trouble with the wordings of those ordinances. Um, they're talking about post-development rate of runoff <clears throat> from development from developed areas. This area the amount of runoff from the new development would be trivial compared to what this could possibly cause in this basin. I have a, an image here I'd like to put on the projector. It's one that should be in your packet. I got this from um, the zoning office and this shows the subject property. North is to the top of this map here the proposed property is in green. This is Black Bayou running through the property. What has happened any time that we have very large rainfalls, tropical storms, hurricanes, backwater flooding, this Black Bayou goes out of banks from approximately this area to approximately this area. The overspill area is very wide, especially to the east. What has happened that this uh, commission may not be aware of 
This property that I've outlined in a pen right here with this one large pond <coughs> has all been built up above natural grade about four feet. <coughs> this other area that I have outlined here with a pen, which is about 34 acres, is only recently being built up. You can see the new pond being constructed right here in this area. This is not a subdivision. This is one private landowner. All of this property, this L-shaped <coughs> property, is being built up from a minimum of one feet to an approximate four feet higher than original floodplain. All of the water that used to come through this watershed across this area can no longer go there. It's going to be forced to be higher on this side of the highway, go around, around this new, around this new embankment, and by this new development building on this bank, the land here is high. From here going back this way, the land elevation goes up. If you block this off here, the only water passage you're going to have for conveyance is right under the bridge and from their parking lot to this gentleman's property. I see this as a major concern. Other than denying for the usual spot zoning issue, this needs to be taken into consideration. Um, DPW is very much aware of this. There was a natural drainage slough that went right through this property. You can see it. You can see evidence of it left on this map. It went right through here. It's gone. That was actually a parish ditch. It's gone. So um, while our council haggles on how the new drainage ordinance should be worded, I'd like for this commission to look at this. This is a prime example of what a development can cause drainage effect-wise has nothing to do with rate of runoff from the new development. This can, can be a detriment to conveyance for water coming downriver. Thank you. Thank you. I would just like to address the, the drainage concerns and the floodplain concerns in the way that uh, the current subdivision ordinance does have a process that uh, allows for these type of developments as long as you do floodplain mitigation, which we fully Im intend to do. Uh, you can see from the site plan that uh, we intend to have a detention pond to uh, you know, be a zero impact development, but also the, the issue that they were bringing up was the floodplain mitigation, which will also be satisfied, which is required. Comments, questions from commissioners? Staff, how current is this aerial photograph? I'd say about a year and a half. Year. I'd like for you to address an issue for me. How do you how do you uh, justify the, the proposed zoning as being consistent with the surrounding zoning again? The proposed zoning is uh, is consistent with the surrounding zoning to some degree because there are properties up and down by Narcisse Road, which this property fronts on. That uh, that are not used as what's allowed under rural zoning. They're uh, they're commercial property. There's many storage warehouses. There's a trailer park. There's townhome development. Uh, none of these things are allowed under that rural zoning, and yet it's not shown on the zoning map. So it appears that everything around us, at least on the south side of Inosis, is rural. But that's not the actual case. Well, many of those uses were established prior to an enactment of zoning, so there would be non-conforming uses, which means they wouldn't be allowed to expand. Um, 
you know, those nonconformities are permitted to continue to exist in their present form, just because they existed prior to there being a zoning ordinance. I, I, I just... It was just to say that looking at the zoning map is misleading. There are uh, these type of developments in the area. Uh, I did want to add that uh, I don't know if you all have the, the sketch of the entire piece of property. It's approximately 20 acres. It extends a, a good way south. Uh, the developer is only trying to develop the first 350 foot of property depth. Uh, he's leaving a lot of property there that's going to act as a natural flood plain conveyance uh, that's going to allow the water to back up off of Black Bay on his property. Um, Again, I, I said that we were going to be fulfilling and are required to meet the floodplain mitigation, uh, which means that we're going to dig a hole equal to the fill that we uh, that we put on the site that will, you know, pretty much keep things as they are. We don't know what is happening with the properties to the east, and really, that's a concern for the parish, but doesn't doesn't. Is, is no reason to deny our request. Uh, we intend to uh, to be a zero impact development, not just based on runoff, but also on floodplain uh, mitigation. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? I have a question for I have a question for Lance. But I think this should be addressed to you. Um, I think it's about zoning, but if this was approved, the little square that they're proposing to develop, that's all they could develop. They, could they expand <coughs> the rear of the property if they should choose? No, ma'am. All that would be re all that would be rezoned was what was requested, which would be that Just 350. What you have yes, ma'am. Okay. Correct. Being familiar with this property, let me comment on a couple of things that you said. Yes, uh, you want to talk about the property to the back. That's swamp. That's all it is. Right. So whether you develop there or not, it's still going to still going to flood. And the residents in this area, because of the draining and development concerns, yeah, they went ahead and they got a petition together and requested this property be rezoned rural to protect what was there, what was existing. Uh, you brought up other commercial uses along Bayou Narcisse in the area and so forth. Well, uh, yes, some are non-conforming uses. This property originally was medium intensity residential and some things were going on when it was medium intensity residential, but now it is rural, it is all rural. So those, those uses have no no bearing right now. I understand. Um, first and foremost is spot zoning. Doesn't matter what your so much your intent is, it's spot zoning. And unless the commission has changed its opinions, we, we don't endorse spot zoning. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? I'll go ahead and make move that we deny. Based on huh? based on are you going based on the fact that it's about zoning. I second that. I have a motion denied by Mike Bardwell, seconded by Scott Courtright. Is there any opposition or discussion? Motion passes. Item six, new business. Any items of new business? None. Item seven, old business. We got a handout. That's under uh, committee report? Okay. Okay, then item eight, subcommittee report. We held a uh, zoning subcommittee 
meeting two weeks ago um, on that agenda. <clears throat> they had a homeowners association representative from May and Shack Acres come in to the zoning subcommittee. Uh, there's no action, by the way, on this, but he, he wanted to um, talk to the zoning subcommittee about uh, possibly rezoning that area um, that deals with Man Shack Acres. Um, like I said, there's no action on this. He went back and I think he's going to do a little more research and I don't know whether he, com whether he will come back or not, but that item was on the agenda. Uh, secondly, we are beginning to look at a uh, sign ordinance, redoing the sign ordinance for the, um, for the parish. Um, this came as a directed from strategic planning. Some of the councilmen thought that we should look at the, uh, the sign ordinance that we have in place today and make some modifications. So we're beginning the process. Um, what we did was uh, we're beginning to look at what you have handed out tonight as uh, the city of Gonzales's sign ordinance. And, and looking at it, it's a pretty good ordinance. I don't, I don't know that we need to go to the extremes that, that the city has gone to for the whole parish, but it's a good place to start. So we'll begin looking at that uh, and pursuing that at the, the next zoning subcommittee meeting as well. Um, in addition to that, we're still looking at parish-wide rezoning. That's the every three years that we go through and we look at the uh, zoning throughout the parish. And we're still looking at that. We've uh, completed some sections. Lance has uh, taken the parish and divided it up into several sections so we uh, tackle a section of, of the, um, the map at a time. So we're still pursuing that. That's all I've got. Anybody else from the committee? On the sign uh, deal, uh, is that policed? I see the last uh, penalties, 25-14, uh, says a city of Gonzales. In this particular example, polices the sign ordinance. There's a $500 fine. Is that yeah, what are your we thoughts even, there? We haven't even began. I mean, we're just passing policing? this out and just beginning the, the beginning okay. stages of looking at. Gotcha. Just generally, any violation of our ordinance can be $500. Yeah, I'm talking about policing. Who's gonna Who's gonna police the sign? If you get a violation, you, what we do in some things is have the sheriff go serve them. We have them issue a citation. Well, who's gonna violation? drive around and look and see that sign oh. doesn't fit our ordinance? That was my question. But I guess we, we haven't. We haven't. Right. We <laughs> haven't addressed <laughs> that issue right. yet. I mean, we just like I said, this is the early stages of beginning to look at the ordinance. Gotcha. Um, and the committee welcomes any comments you, you've been handed out. If anybody's not on the zoning subcommittee and you have anything that you see in this ordinance or outside of this ordinance that you'd like to have the zoning subcommittee be aware of, by all means, forward those comments. That's all I've got. I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second motion by Julio Dumas, seconded by Scott Courtright. Is there any opposition or discussion? Motion passes.